Hello guys, in this lecture we will be discussing about corticosteroids and the dental treatment. First of all, let's see what are these corticosteroids and which glands they secrete the corticosteroids. Adrenal glands, they secrete a diverse group of hormones and those are required for the metabolic control, for the regulation of water and electrolyte balance, as well as modulation of the body's response to stress. Medulla of adrenal glands, they secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine. The other names of these uh, hormones are adrenaline and noradrenaline. And these hormones are secreted when these glands are being stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system. Adrenal cortex produces various substances which are derived from cholesterol and those hormones collectively they are called corticosteroids. Corticosteroids and their synthetic analogs are used in for replacement in cases of adrenal insufficiency. They are widely used for suppressing the acute as well as for chronic inflammation, which may be due to some injury or may be due to some disease. Well, the adrenal cortex it synthesizes and secretes two types of steroid hormone, the 19 carbon androgens and the 21 carbon corticosteroids. Well, corticosteroids can be further classified based on their major actions. And some of these like hydrocortisone, they have greater effects on carbohydrate metabolism. And these are called glucocorticoids. These hormones, they have anti-inflammatory action and that is why they are used for this purpose quite widely. Glucocorticoids are potent inhibitors of the inflammatory response. The actions of glucocorticoids are due to many effects which result from these N, uh, hormones binding to their receptors. Here we can see, in case of stress, what is going to happen? The stress is going to affect the hypothalamus. And why this stress will be? Because of any physiological or physical reason. So it is going to release the CRH, which is corticotropin releasing hormone. Well, that is going to affect the anterior pituitary, which is going to release the corticotropes, and that is the adrenocorticotropic hormone. That is going to affect the adrenal cortex, the cells which are present in its zona fasciculata. That is going to release the cortisol. So cortisol would be now, decreasing the amount of any inflammation and is going to reduce the inflammation. When cortisol will be in a sufficient amount, it will also exert a negative feedback control on the release of these CRH uh, hormone or corticotropin releasing hormone and also on ACTH, that is adrenocorticotropic hormone. So if someone is taking uh, steroids or corticosteroids, already there will be enough amount of circulating uh, corticosteroids in the body, and that will be affecting the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary, apart from affecting the inflammation it will also be affecting the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary and there will be a negative feedback. 
so they won't be releasing the CRH as well as ACTH it is not going to be present hence adrenal cortex it will be going into the disuse atrophy it is not going to work properly and in case of any further stress when the uh, release of cortisol would be required then adrenal cortex would not be in a position to secrete the cortisol in adequate amount that is why some more administration some more amount of the cortis uh, like uh, corticosteroids would be required at that time when we anticipate that a person would be undergoing some stress it could be in uh, from our point of view when we would be performing some surgery well why these glucocorticoids they are being used glucocorticoids are used clinically in two ways the first use is in replacement therapy that is done in insufficient production of the corticosteroids that can result from a defect in the adrenal cortex anterior pituitary or the hypothalamus these defects can be either congenital or they could be acquired due to some disease and the outcome could be it could be acute insufficiency or it could be chronic insufficiency second use of these uh, steroids or glucocorticoids is in the suppression of inflammation in these inflammatory conditions these glucocorticoids they don't treat the primary disease they are just used to suppress the inflammation but keep in mind the destruction of that affected tissue will progress the use in this these cases will be only palliative well the conditions which <clears throat> uh, like in those conditions where we are using the corticosteroids these are first of all we <clears throat> classify those as <clears throat> corticosteroid abnormalities autoimmune diseases gastrointestinal disease and other diseases so corticosteroid abnormalities addison's disease that is deficiency of steroids cushing's disease excess steroids autoimmune diseases arthritis rheumatoid arthritis then collagen diseases pemphigus vulgaris psoriasis systemic lupus erythematosus scleroderma then the gastrointestinal diseases like crohn's disease ulcerative colitis and inflammatory bowel disease or ibd other diseases they could be some hematological diseases hypercalcemia organ transplant and they could be given along with the chemotherapy well in dentistry these steroids they are uh, have very limited application we used in the like, cases of a uh, recurrent aphthous ulceration but in extreme cases only also uh, the topical application for these aphthous ulcers they also contain steroids like some of them then can be used in pulpal hypersensitivity can be used in case of T TMJ dysfunction an intraarticular injection is given then in case you have performed some surgery maybe after some uh, fracture and open reduction is done or maybe osteotomy is done so post operatively you can also give it and if on the dental chair the patient undergoes anaphylaxis then you can also administer steroids well there are some adverse effects of these glucocorticoids so which systems are being affected like neurological system patient could be having insomnia agitation mania withdrawal syndrome then infectious system like the whole infection how it could be having problem there could be chances of increased infections and some opportunistic infections they may develop on the vascular system there would be hypertension increased atherosclerotic disease risk 
Well, on the skin and mucosa, chances of atrophy. On the skeletal system, reduced calcium absorption. So, there would be osteoporosis, avascular osteonecrosis, and in children, it would be impaired growth. Well, on the muscular system, myopathy and muscular wasting can occur. On the metabolic system, what is going to happen? There would be chances of glucose intolerance, obesity, and chances of hyperlipidemia. On the reproductive system, there would be chances of hypogonadism. Then on the GIT, peptic ulcers may develop. And on the eyes, so there would be chances of having cataracts. Well, one more question which comes in the dental boards that which is the most potent uh, glucocorticoid that is dexamethasone. Only 0.75 milligram of dexamethasone is equal to 20 milligram of hydrocortisone or cortisone. Prednisone is also quite potent, like 5 milligram is equal to 20 milligram. So keep this thing in your mind. And now the biological half-lives of commonly used steroids, like 8 to 12 hours, which are short-acting steroids, cortisone and hydrocortisone. 18 to 36 hours, intermediate-acting methylprednisolone, prednisolone, prednisone and triamcinolone. 36 hours to 72 hours, which are long-acting, that is betamethasone, then dexamethasone and paramethasone. So what is this biological half-life? Biological half-life of corticosteroid is defined as the period of suppression of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, which we have discussed already. There are three types of adrenal insufficiency. The primary adrenal insufficiency, it occurs when the adrenal glands, they are damaged. Secondary adrenal insufficiency, it results from destructive pituitary disorders. And tertiary adrenal insufficiency is that condition which results from corticosteroids being administered on a chronic basis. Now, patients who are on steroids, how we are going to deal with them in our dental offices or when they come for the dental treatment. Patients who are having large doses of glucocorticoids for a very long period, they present special problems in the dental treatment. These patients are likely to have a decreased resistance to infection and a poor wound healing response. <clears throat> in these patients, these sources of infection <clears throat> in the oral cavity like carious teeth, inflamed tissues, gums, they should be promptly treated. If surgical procedures are required for these patients, they should be quite conservative, atraumatic, and aseptic, like as you can do it, exercise all the precautions. Preoperative antimicrobial prophylaxis may be indicated in some of the cases, but that is according to Yigala. <clears throat> the other considerations in patients receiving glucocorticoids is the suppression of the pituitary adrenal function and that degree of suppression of the adrenal gland, it depends upon the length of treatment, the frequency and the manner of administration as well as the glucocorticoid preparation, like whatever, the prednisolone, dexamethasone, cortisone, what you have administered, that is also important. Recommendations for steroid supplementation during the surgery. So here, the routine dentistry. I have taken this from Little and Phallus. The target dose the, for the primary adrenal insufficiency or for the secondary adrenal insufficiency. Routine dentistry, we do not give any supplementation, whether it is primary or it is secondary. For minor surgery, 25 milligram of hydrocortisone equivalent preoperatively on the day of surgery, that is in primary adrenal insufficiency. In secondary adrenal insufficiency, we just continue with the daily therapeutic dose. For moderate surgical stress, 
50 to 75 milligram on the day of surgery and up to one day after return to preoperative glucocorticoid dose on the post-operative day two, like second day. Well, uh, second day after the surgery. And for the secondary adrenal insufficiency, it will be daily therapeutic dose. Major surgical stress, 100 to 150 milligram per day of hydrocortisone equivalent given for two to three days after preoperative dose, 50 milligram of hydrocortisone intravenous every eight hours after the initial dose for the first 48 to 72 hours after the surgery. Secondary adrenal insufficiency again, we will just continue with their daily therapeutic dose. Another very good uh, regime I got from uh, one, uh, this uh, journal which was published for the dental hygienists and according to that, dental procedures and recommended corticosteroid supplementation in patients with adrenal insufficiency. Negligible risk category non-surgical dental procedures so no supplementation is required mild risk uh, risk category minor oral surgery a few simple extractions biopsy minor periodontal surgery the regimen is the glucocorticoid target is about 25 milligram of hydrocortisone equivalent 5 milligram of prednisolone on the day of surgery moderate to major risk category major oral surgery multiple extractions quadrant periodontal surgery, extraction of bony impactions, osseous surgery, osteotomy, bone resections, cancer surgery, surgical procedures involving general anesthesia. So the procedures which will last more than one hour associated with significant blood loss. The regimen for them is glucocorticoid target is about 50 to 100 milligram per day of hydrocortisone equivalent the day of surgery and for at least one post-operative day. Well, in case of general anesthesia, in case of infection and pain, it can increase the risk of adrenal crisis because there will be stress in the susceptible patients. So there are certain final words. In the recent past, researchers have concluded that adrenal crisis is a rare event in dentistry, especially for the patients who are suffering from secondary adrenal insufficiency who have developed this condition from steroids administration for certain medical conditions. Routine dental procedures including non-surgical periodontal therapy for these patients it could be performed without glucocorticoid supplementation or having a steroid cover. Patients who are suffering from Addison's disease are more at the risk for developing acute adrenal crisis than those patients who are having secondary adrenal insufficiency. So for these who are having secondary adrenal uh, insufficiency, this later group of patients, performance of routine dentistry, including minor surgical procedures under local anesthetic, it does not require supplemental steroids. The rule of two no longer applies for these individuals, like who are suffering from secondary adrenal insufficiency. However, the patients, physicians should always be considered if you are in doubt. Well, for uh, more informative and educational videos keep on visiting our YouTube channel and you will be getting a lot more videos like this which will be covering uh, the topics which are required for your fundamental knowledge exam for uh, INBDE exam for the ADET exam and for the clinical judgment exam as well as we are making videos for the situational judgment exam as well and for our courses for the details of that you can visit our facebook page on dental prep ca as well as on our website dentalprep.ca so thank you very much and soon i will be back with more information